Hello everyone, welcome to the replay. Thanks for joining me for another live card. We are making another Christmas card today with this new Gnome for Christmas Stampin' Thin Cut set. And I'm just getting this shared over to the group and then we'll get started. Actually, Um, hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, there we go. That should be live. Okay, there we go. Sorry, sorry. Thanks for um being patient with me. So, inspired by yesterday's card design, I want to do basically the same thing today. But I'm going to use this stamp set and um, I also pulled out some red glitter paper that I want to use to give it some, oh, just a little bit more bling. Uh, I've got my trusty stitched rectangle die um, out and ready. And so let's get started. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to emboss the candy canes on here and probably the Merry Christmas. I think that would work well for us. So I'm gonna, let's see, get my blocks ready. And I've just got my Merry Christmas. And let's see, my little candy cane. That's pretty much all I'm going to use to just make a random stamped background. And we will get that all stamped up and then just emboss that. And I'm just going to go. There we go. Okay. So I got my two stamps. We'll emboss that and then do some resist with the candied apple distressed oxide. So I'm just rubbing the card with the anti-static pouch to get some good powder on there and get it, keep it from having my powder, my embossing powder attach itself too much. Okay, and then we'll be using First of Mark ink and it's clear ink for embossing. Hey mom, hey Christy, you're working on a gnome wreath. Well, that's awesome. I bet it would look really good at my house. Hi Karen. Um, so I'm just gonna randomly stamp Merry Christmas all over the place, right? Um, I'm not turning it to get it super random though like it's not upside down I'm not doing anything too crazy just a few Merry Christmases and then I'm gonna do the same with the candy cane I need to put it at an angle where I can see This one I am kind of going a little bit more <laughs> random with the with the candy cane because I need to fill in some spaces. Now, see if you can see that embossing or the ink. So it's super light right now, obviously, because we haven't done anything with it yet. Um, but. I'm gonna emboss it in white, and then you know what? If we see that it's got areas that really need more, then of course we can add more. I actually think this might 
work out just right for us. Um, maybe a little bit of another one right there on that end. So I'll do it going the other way. Some on that end. Just a peek of it on that end. Okay. Only because when I cut this out, I, I want something to still be around the outside edges. Otherwise it looks, it's gonna be too bare. tapping off the excess and I'm noticing a couple of little areas there we go okay that's pretty clean so our embossing should come out nice and neat we put this away and we'll get that heat started now, since I don't have the whole entire card front covered, I can just use some, uh, some tweezers to hold the card while I heat set it. Getting that all melted. I don't know if you can see it turning since it's white on white. It should be everything. Now, yesterday I did my inking and then my cutting it with the rectangle. Well, I'm gonna do that first. Reason being is because when I put on my red ink, I do want it to get darker around the edges so it doesn't have a white edge. I want it to have a dark red edge. So I'm gonna set this just right through the die cut machine to cut that out and then we'll ink it up. And I'm just sandwiching it in my plates. And I'm gonna run it through. looking really good so far. So I'm gonna take my scratch paper. I've got my uh, blending end over Velcro to the back. Remember that, that'll help 
Let me keep it with its matching pad. Well, hello, Kara. How are you? Hi, Julie. Oh, y'all are up over in Australia. I'm just going to bring in that red. And I've got some harsh lines, and I'm going to have to blend that out. I'm just blending and blending, trying to get that ink all on the card. I'm not going to worry about where this light area is because that's where I'm going to put my gnome. Just circling it around. Anywhere there was a harsh edge, it's going away. Okay. I'm not going to try to um, get that. I'm not going to try and fill that in. Okay. You can put that back. And put this back in its box. Okay, now the fun part. Actually, let me clean off where that white embossing is and get that red ink to clean off. We'll see that white come back through nice and bright. Now, since this is a distressed oxide, it will react to water. So I'm just gonna spritz it. And that was super heavy. So I'm really hoping for a big lift. So I'm just drying it out. You can see now it made kind of a, well, it gave the whole thing a distressed look. Let's dry that off and get our cardstock dry again. Try putting a little bit more around the edges and see how much different it'll look now. Like the distressed red compared to fresh red. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Cause like some of it looks super distressed and some of it looks nice and strong again. I better quit before my paper decides I'm being too rough. Okay. Okay, I'm just wiping 
off the ink from my white embossed areas so I can get that white to show through again. Okay. Looks good to me. That's a nice variant look. Same color, but it's doing all these different things depending on how much water it got or how much fresh ink it got. And I'm going to put it on this red, red glitter paper. And just a little bit of it peeking. Just trying to flatten that out a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. I am using a little bit extra adhesive uh, just because number one is going onto the glitter paper and that's kind of hard sometimes to adhere to, but also so that hopefully it'll hold it down a little bit better with the extra I'm just going to run it over, get a good, good, strong adhesion. Okay. This isn't necessary. It's just an old tool I have, and it gives me good uh, rolling pressure. And so now I'll have my background ready to go. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. Hey, Lily. Hey, Melissa. Hi, Mary, Martha, hello, hello, Armando. Awesome, so glad to have you guys here. Okay, now here's another scratch piece of white daisy. And I'm gonna take this guy, this gnome. I'm just gonna gently take him from the carrier sheet. I don't wanna tear him. Or tear any parts off of them. I'm just going to use like a 3x3 three three block. Put him on, I guess at an angle so that I can get, make sure and get all of him. Awesome. Okay. And then, you know, I usually just rub it on my skin or on my jeans to get that um, coating off since it's a brand new stamp and it'll roughen up that edge so it'll take to the ink real good. Okay, let's put our little cushion underneath for a nice crisp stamp. Now I'm stamping in intense black because I wanna come back and color him in with our markers. So just getting a good, good, good inking. I'll try it out on my on my scratch paper. Awesome. Okay. Ink it up again. He's ready to go. Just making sure I get a good, clean image. Awesome. Okay, let's see what colors we're gonna need here. Oh, I lost my chart. Let's look. both sets of our tri-blend markers so that I can have a little bit more variety on what colors I'm going to want. I definitely need this dark red blend and I think I'm going to go with, I do like the dull green, actually the alpine green. Alpine green blend and the dark red blend. So... Dark red blend. 
and we need the alpine green blend. I think I need something a little goldish for the bell, so I'll put the gold yellow blend. And what else does he have? Oh, his his uh, reindeer. I think I'm gonna go with the gold brown shades. Gold brown shades. I need a little bit of gray here. Let's go with the brown gray shades. Brown gray, brown gray. Brown gray shades. A little bit of pink for the nose. I think that coral blend and in fact let's just do his nose real quick and set this and that's that way I can just set this marker back I don't need it oh for the little hands okay okay let's start coloring in and then we'll see where we're missing anything. So I want the medium gold yellow for the little jingle bell. And of course, I'm going to use some shimmer on that. Just with my clear shimmer brush. That way it can dry while we're doing the rest. And let's see, for the antlers, we're doing the gold brown shades. I really like that medium tone as well, but I'm gonna start with the light. Whoa, that was a dark. I'm gonna start with the light and we'll build up. I do not color in order. I kind of just color whatever part feels like that I want to get out of the way. So every little piece that I complete helps me feel a little bit more done. So I'm just kind of going around the inside edges. A little bit darker. And then I just kind of come in here. With the dark, dark end. Okay. So probably a reindeer's antlers would be like lighter, right? I don't know. But that'll give us a place to start. Um, let's see here. I want the green for his little outfit here. And I know it's light, but I'm gonna come back in with the darker for sure. Kind of going along the edges. And I'm going to 
take that medium and kind of blend it in. And then I just like to go back to the light. And help it blend a little bit more. Now as it settles, um, the light and the dark tend to mix a little bit better. So I'm not worried about that at all. Okay. This guy needs his mustache. his beard I'm just kind of gonna go around the edge okay and then with my blender Kind of like a Clorox blender. I'm just gonna blend out those edges and kind of pull the color into the center. to the fun part our dark red blend I, I like the medium for this candy cane Give it a little bit of dark in there. And then do the same for his hat. Let's start off with the light. Just carefully around that nose. Let's see, am I missing anybody? You guys oh hi Anna hey Sam hi Charlie glad to have you guys with me so I'm just coloring in my little gnome Perfect number of stripes. And we're giving a little bit of uh, darkness to the bottom of those stripes. Just for a little shadow effect. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to do. On, on him. Now I'll just take my clear shimmer and put it in the white sections. There we go. So we got some nice shimmer. Um, in his hat. I'm not going to do that anywhere else. I could do it on his little boots. Let's 
a little bit of shimmer on his shoes. Doesn't every guy love shimmery shoes? Okay. Give it a quick, quick little dry off. Now, this set comes with thin cuts, so I can totally just cut him out to add to the card. Ah, good thing that was on the edge and not on him. See, and this will fit right over him and cut out nice and neat. Let me see if I can clean off my fingers. I got all this extra stuff now on my desk. I'm just getting my cuddle bug set up. I'm gonna put a little bit of washi on him to hold that um, thin cut in place. I wanna make sure that I get a really nice clean cut. Just run it through my die cut machine. Hello, Janie. Ooh. Sorry. I tapped the wrong thing there. And now we've got our awesome little gnome. Just ready. We've got all these different reds, and I'm I'm okay with that. Okay. So. I'm going to have to lay this card underneath something so I can make sure to get a good adhesion to my glitter paper because it's um, wanting to come up. And I'm just gonna center that. And now I, can, I just want him to go boom, right there. But he's kind of floating, so we need to think of something to put behind him to kind of um, settle him down. I know these, I had these um, cut from the other day, but they just don't match. And I could give him a little setting area like that and just stamp something right there. But Merry Christmas is not going to work. Yeah. Sometimes that's dangerous. I could cut a little piece for him to sit on like that. Let's try that. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna do it in black. I think that'll really let it pop. So we'll just try it. So 
that looks really cute. I need some more black somewhere though because otherwise it's just kind of there for no reason. And I do need a sentiment cut out. Okay. Where's my Merry Christmas? Okay, let's do that. Let us white emboss the Merry Christmas and then we can decide where we're gonna put that in relation. Kind of a choose your own adventure card. Just kind of deciding as we go. I'm doing it in the center because then I can either slice off one end or the other or I can dovetail it or whatever. Let's give it two coats. Set that. So now I'm wondering what if I were to use black glitter instead of. The red glitter that came off really easily by the way because it is not adhering as well as I wanted it to so I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with that but I do have black glitter paper and we can surely try that to see because we like it better So let me just cut that piece. Now, my um, card front there is three and three quarters. I'm gonna cut it an eighth longer and an eighth um, longer on the five inch side. That looks nice. That looks nice. I think I like the black better. I don't think that my adhesive is going to stand up to the test of time. Ah, I ran out of the adhesive. Let's try another one. Maybe we can use some foam tape on there and see how that acts. I really do like though some dimension. So maybe this will work better for me. Oof. Oh yeah, that definitely <laughs> is gonna stay stuck. Ah. So now when I put him here, 
this. Okay, awesome. So it's just the right length that I can dovetail it. And if I center him, I can put this right under and it's gonna look just right. So we'll put that right there. And we'll put him right there. Just perfect. Um, what do I need to do here? So definitely some foam tape on this guy. And some foam tape on this guy. I think, well, too late now. Let's see, I think I need to trim it up from the top, but too late. Too late? Okay, there's that. And just gonna Frankenstein my foam here. I want to make sure my antlers on this little guy aren't unsupported. Probably the same should go for my little hat. Okay, that's plenty of foam tape. This can just go straight adhesive. Let's set this first and then I'll know where to set that. So I think I want it right there. And so this needs to go right there. Peel this off. So I started with the inspiration from yesterday's card, but I think this totally took a different turn. We'll compare and see. There we go. Supported, supported all the way. I can feel it. And of course we need, if we can find, so I would love to put some of the red and green dots, but I fear that they're not going to be the correct colors. I could go with the black and white dots. I could go with clear. Yeah, see, I'm already, I've got all these different reds. The greens look cute though, the greens. Take a medium dot and put it up here. And just take a large one and then that teeny one. Just to bring in another green or some more green. I know it doesn't exactly match this, but like these two reds don't match. So I'm gonna say those two greens don't have to match. 
I think the black definitely brings it together. And I didn't add string. I didn't add string, but I think we're good. And plenty of dimension though. The foam tape adhered to the glitter paper much, much better than straight adhesive. So that's actually a plus because that does give us some nice dimension there. All right, that's it guys. So we got a little bit of everything in today's card. We've got some glitter. We've got some embossing. We've got some distress ink. We've got markers. We've got our bling. Um, we've got glitter paper. We've got shimmer brush, foam tape. Just a little bit of everything going on here. And I, I think it looks really cute. Let me bring it up so you can see some of that detail. So, oh, let me show you, let's see, yesterday's card, which was our inspiration. So we've got that same embossed background, but instead of the blue being strong on the outside and soft on the inside, it's, this card is stronger on the outside and softer on the inside. We've got our um, images here, we've got our sentiments. Um, so instead of cardstock here, we use glitter paper here. I, I really like that. This does have a little bit of a background, but like this one sits on this so that it'll have a back and foreground. So similar, good place to start and then have something different, totally inspired from that first card. So there you go. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you here tomorrow night. Thanks, Martha. I hope to see y'all tomorrow night. In the meantime, I hope that you're creating something of your own. I'd be glad for you to share it in the group so everybody can see. Um, otherwise, I will see y'all tomorrow night. Everyone have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.